What you're seeing is you're, you're really seeing a decoupling of the world. Our Western regions are growing mid-teens. It's the strongest growth we're seeing in the West since 2017. And you're, then you're seeing a slowdown in Asia, particularly China, which is predominantly uh, pandemic-driven. So you're seeing very two different odds that's coming out. So very, very strong growth in 70% of our business decline in 30. That will change in the second quarter. Asia will go back to growth. And that means we'll have an 80% of the business growing very strong. And you're going to have a 20% that we expect, you know, similar performance in China in the second quarter compared to the first due to severe lockdowns across almost every major city in China at this stage. So, Casper, there's the headwind around these COVID measures, but also we're talking about inflation right across uh, business lines, uh, various sectors, companies. Uh, if we can just get to your margins, because it feels as though investors are going to focus on that today. This is where the bad news really comes around uh, gross and operating margins. We expect no growth now. So we're talking, what, 50.7% and 9.4%, uh, which is what you had last year. What is it going to take to get these margins expanding again? What you are going to see is you are seeing an inflation on the cost level. So what we said is our margin will stay stable. Our net income will grow 20% this year. So we're getting it through the top line. And of course, you're going to get it through the pricing. But overall, we need to get you know, China back to growth. We don't expect China to grow this year from an you know, overall standpoint. It will be a negative territory. So the margin expansion will come through the top line. And right now, as you see, we're maintaining the growth you know, the margin at previous level. And despite that, we're growing our top line 10% and we're growing our bottom line you know, 20%. So what we are also seeing is we are seeing very encouraging sign in the trading in April. Actually, our, you know, we're accelerating our trading in April. And that's why we're confirming uh, you know, our guidance at the low end, 10% you know, on the top line and 20% on the bottom line. So despite the current trading environment, actually April is up you know, uh, compared to the first quarter. Casper, sometimes it seems on this show that we're living in parallel universes. Obviously, we've been talking about the big market meltdown in the US yesterday and the way the central banks seem to be nervously worrying about the recession risk by year end or into early 2023. Um, as you look that far out in your business, do you see those recession risks also? Are you concerned that the outlook from here on in is just going to get much harder? I think from a macro standpoint, I don't think the markets are going to get any better. But I do think that the sporting goods industry is not as affected as the rest. And, and I, the reason why I'm saying it is, and I, of course, see the macro measures. As I said, we saw a very strong trading in the month of April. We have the strongest order backlog ever at this stage. And I do think that we still operate in a space of affordable luxuries. That is one. And actually, the passion for sport it continues to grow. And you could see that over the weekend and over this week. You know, the, you know, the interest for football it has never been greater. So you are seeing a slowing down macro. But at the same time, you know, we're seeing an accelerating of our business in all the, all the markets that are operating, quote unquote, normally. So it is a very different you know, space to be in. You have a tale of two cities, macro slowing down and our business accelerating. Looking through the statement, I must have missed any commentary on Russia, so that was probably my oversight. But can I just get you to, to address the Russia issue at the moment and what the impact likely for you going forward will be? So back in March, we already articulated what we thought the impact would be. We do about a half a billion in Russia, and we think that we'll come out probably at 200 to 250 million of business, which is almost in the book at this stage. So in the context of pure business, actually, the Russia impact is minuscule. Of course, it's a human disaster what's going on in Eastern Europe. From a business standpoint, isolated in Russia, it really has no impact on Adidas. Of course, the bigger macro is the spillover effects on increased uh, energy pricing, et cetera, et cetera. But just from a pure business standpoint, the Russia has very little or minuscule impact on our business. And that's why we didn't speak about it, because right now that is not one of our worries. What we're focusing on, getting 70 to 80 percent of our business continue to grow at mid-teens and make certain that we get Asia back to growth, which happens in the second quarter, and then manage the current situation in China as well as we can. And what we decide is we're not going to socialize the challenges in, in China for the rest of the world. We have a great rate uh, acceleration going coming out through the West. And we want to make sure we maintain that and build market share in, in the countries where we're present. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.